Hey, everybody, it's time for the coolest, most refreshing basement breakdown yet. We're talking all about this mint chocolate chip ice cream cone. We see it at the end of 50% off. It bookends Saul's story and the guy for this. What does it mean? What do you mean, ice cream cone? Well, let's explore that question. I'm John Tatey. Join me as I have another basement breakdown. The ice cream cone. I want to pull together a lot of threads here, but let's start just by looking at how the cone works as a prop in this scene, devoid of the greater context of the show. What does the ice cream cone add to the scene here? To me, it adds this happy, carefree energy to Jimmy. He's he's making it happen. He's having fun. He's in the zone right now. And then he's unceremoniously thwarted when he has to get into Nacho's car, and the cone disappears with this audible splat. Even if you had never seen Better Call Saul before, it would be pretty easy to read this cone as an avatar for Saul. His plans are getting flipped upside down. In that respect, it's an echo of this cracked gnome image from the cold open of this episode, 50% off, with its cone-shaped head. This is the final shot of that crime spree we see of uh, Saul Goodman's future clients. It gives an ominous implication to the episode's title, 50% off. It heightens this idea of Saul, among others, losing a piece of themselves. The gnome symbol is something of a rabbit hole in itself, but let's get back to the cone. I'll leave you to explore the gnome on your own. As a closing shot in this scene, the cone comes with an implied epilogue. That cone's gonna melt, right? All of this on-the-surface imagery portends trouble for Saul, and it does so in this funny, whimsical way. It's a very Better Call Saul flourish, now I want to go beyond that top-level read, though, and let's bring in um, some deeper significance of the ice cream cone by connecting threads from the larger narrative of the show. And look, when we're talking about Better Call Saul, it's never a bad thing to investigate the color of the thing. Jimmy appears to be eating mint chocolate chip ice cream. More to the point, it's green. Just so you can be sure this isn't a fluke in the fifth season premiere... Jimmy starts talking about his big plans, and he breaks out the ice cream. It's mint chocolate chip, it's green. Blink and you miss it. Can you see it? No? Well, I promise you it's green. Obviously, it's not that important you see it's green here, but if you want to look for it, it's there. On Better Call Saul, green tends to emerge in the composition when Jimmy's executing a plan. More simply, when Jimmy's going. Green means go. And Jimmy gets into these manic modes when he's focused on building momentum. And he's in one of those modes as we begin season five here, hence the green tie, the green ice cream in this episode. When have we seen green before? Let me give you a few examples that are relevant here. We saw it when Jimmy's TV ad attracts a bunch of witnesses for the Sandpiper Crossing case. The phone lights light up green. He wears green when he's working the Saul Goodman TV commercial producer angle. He wears green when he's honing his cell phone sales pitch at CC Mobile. There's green splashed throughout the Street Life montage in season four. Uh, by the way, if you want more on that montage, watch my breakdown of that episode. Green is also the color of money, and to illustrate that, I sort of want to give you a counterexample. This circus tent scene in Magic Man had Jimmy executing a plan and had a really similar rhythm to some of those other go, go, go scenes I pointed out, but there was no money changing hands. Everything was free. Jimmy was basically giving himself away. There's no green in that sequence. Um, sort of the counterexample that illustrates the point here. Green reappears now because... It fits the game Jimmy is playing, a game that assistant DA Suzanne Erickson helpfully explains for us in 50% Off. This isn't about your clients. This is about your wallet. Hey, slow down. You're you... looking for turnover. You want to churn through more clients, make more money. It's a business model that can only be executed with velocity, right? Saul has to go fast all the time to keep making money with this strategy. So the ice cream is basically an edible stand-in for Saul's approach to the law right now. It's a food you have to eat fast. And this is what Saul is doing in the final scene. He gets on a call with a client. He takes a lick. He switches to another call. He takes another lick. It's as if each client he turns through is another lick at this ice cream cone of money and success and go 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 momentum except that we can feel it melting even as he's eating it now look at the ice cream cone at the beginning of the guy for this the next episode we have this gorgeously shot montage of ants eating the cone no cgi here these are real ants from what i understand it's just thoughtful photography and a very talented ant wrangler at first this upturned cone is sort of recast as a mountain we see this one little ant climbing to the top he's the king of the mountain maybe it's the sort of climb to the top that jimmy envisioned for saul goodman 
right? Remember all that I'm number one talk? This ant feels like they're saying I'm number one. But the king's reign does not last long because the cone is swarmed with red ants. And we know that in Better Call Saul, red is the color of the underworld. We see the ants following each other's path, sharing information. Clearly, this swarm of red cannot be contained. I want to compare this to the elevator scene with Suzanne that happens shortly before we first see the ice cream cone at the end of 50% off. We saw Saul working with these files, right? And each of these file folders represents one of Saul's shady clients. And look at them. They're contained. They're orderly. Jimmy works through them very efficiently. Remember, Jimmy says to Kim when she questions his heavy client load. I got 45 clients. 45? How are you going to handle all that? I got a system. And we're seeing the system in action here. This is how it's supposed to work. But then we have this image of the ants, and it's such a marked contrast. The file folders show us how Jimmy thinks his system works, and the ants are showing us how that actually is going to play out for him. It's not orderly. He doesn't have this criminal element under control. It's a mess that is going to consume everything in its path. It's going to consume him. I want to back up to this idea of the cone as a mountain as I talk about the soundtrack in this scene. The music here really plays up the mountain reading of this image, and it adds a different shading to it. Yodeling. It's alpine music. Here's the album cover of the guys who did this yodeling. I looked it up. All the comments on that YouTube video are Better Call Saul fans right now. Yodeling. Alpine music. It reminds me of the Alpine Shepherd Boy from season one. That's the Hummel figurine that belonged to Geraldine Strauss. Geraldine was the woman who gave Jimmy the first fee he ever earned for totally legitimate legal work. And I always remember that shot of Jimmy snatching the money out of Geraldine Strauss's outstretched hand. And to him, it's like manna, like oxygen, right? He gets this look on his face in the scene of almost disbelief. Like he can't believe that he could actually make a buck by playing it straight. Geraldine and the Alpine Shepherd Boy became this enduring symbol for the virtuous path for Jimmy, the path he didn't take, this vision he had at moments but could never sustain, that he could climb the mountain of success and still be a good person, that he could do both. Remember, when he hears about Geraldine's death, he's more busted up about it than he was about his brother's death. Did Clarence get the Alpine Shepherd boy? That's how important this vision, however implausible it may have seemed, was to him. And I feel it conjured here again when Saul returns to that spot on the sidewalk at the end of the guy for this, and the mountain is gone, devoured by the red ants. Because Saul's ever deeper involvement in the criminal realm really forecloses on any possibility that he ever will scale that legitimate mountain of success or anything resembling it, right? This go, 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 I'm number one success that he dreamed of for Saul, that was a mirage too. When it comes to success... Saul is going to have to make do with the crumbs. Might not seem possible, but there's even more we could say about this ice cream cone. But that's all I have to say for now. I'm going to leave it to you. Hey, I love reading your comments. I love hearing about what you see beyond what I see. I love when we learn from each other. Share your insights in the comments. And remember, if you made it this far, you probably had fun. So hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.